What is up guys, it's Several here and welcome to episode 182 of the FIFA 13 career mode. And let's get straight underway. As you can see today, we have two games in the league. Uh, but the most important is the second one of them today against Barcelona away. And that is going to be the tough, tricky fixture that could possibly decide the league even at this stage of the campaign in January. But obviously we are in transfer time and I want to thank you guys for all your suggestions that you have left me. I did look at all of your players. Rest assured, I have looked at every single comment. That has been suggested to me, you know? Um, but uh, one of the most recent comments was to show all the players who have uh, uh, who are above 85 or so. And this is it, you know? Le Lionel Messi is still the best player in the, in the world, technically. But he's 30 now, and he's getting pretty old. El Shirari and Hazard, my two magical, magical players that I had at Chelsea, are second and third in the list. Uh, Tottenham duo Hugo Lloris and Gareth Bale are uh, fourth and fifth, respectively. And then Sergio Aguero... Uh, is six surprisingly, and then we have our first regen player, David Serraro Garcia. Uh, if you remember, I had him at Portugal. He's only 23 years old and 90 rated. He is fantastic. Uh, a couple of you know, I'm just going to scroll through the ones that you guys would expect to reach high numbers because uh, these are the players that uh, in career mode um, uh, are used. Like these are players that have faces that are, that start in the game and that progress uh, well. But uh, here's another guy, a striker, Christian Gonzalez, 24 years old and he is 87 rated. He is a beast. Um, I think I actually think he scored a goal against me when we played Bayern Munich, but uh, don't quote me on that. Um, carrying on down the list, uh, we're getting into the low, uh, uh, or sorry, to the yeah, to the low kind of 80 rated now, uh, 85 and below. And I'm just scrolling through trying to see if there's a player without a face. And we climb to Lloyd Quackwa. If you remember, I signed him off for a season on loan right at the start of the career mode, of the career mode with Southampton. Uh, when I was still with them, and he was a great, great player for me. I think he scored an overhead kick against Man United or something like that. That's what I remember of him. Um, but he is a fantastic player. And then going down the list, there's no one really, uh, no one else really that that's that special. Uh, you know, they're they're all kind of a little bit more older, and I'm not really interested in signing them. But uh, obviously, Sevilla did not want to accept 20 million to give me for the transfer budget. Uh, the board said no, so I was like, yeah, I didn't really expect that. Then it, then an offer came in for Campania, and I thought, wow, if I play this right, I could actually get some decent money for a decent midfielder, and then I could probably I could probably go out and uh, I could probably go out and buy a better one or scout a better one. Um, and so at this point, I was just thinking, all right, what's the best way to make money off Campania? Because, you know, he doesn't really play too much first-team football. And I could do with getting rid of him in exchange for a large sum of money. I was looking for around £15 million. Um, I think in the end, I settled for a little bit less. But anyway, on to our first uh, match of today. Insigne starts, and he's just going to cut inside and have a shot nice and early on in the match. But it gets blocked, and eventually they do clear it out. But Boney here on the ball, he is going to just find himself a little bit of space, have a fake shot, cut back inside, and go for the far post shot. And unfortunately, it just curls wide but we carry on a little bit further on into the 15th minute now or roundabouts and Insigne has a fantastic effort saved and it really was a fantastic save by the keeper uh, but you can tell that this match is just going to go our way and our way only and it was a t it was about time for Ben Khalifa to get a goal uh, in fairness to the other team it did take all the way up to 44 minutes so pretty much the entire first half it took us to score um, and I think not many, not many teams have managed to keep us out for that long so uh in terms of defending, they were actually pretty solid, but we still managed to create the chances, and that one was just a nice little uh, forward pass, and the keeper could not save it. We have a 1-0 lead, and we move into the second half again. Ben Cleaver on the ball, linking up well with Gary Gardner. Gary Gardner is just going to find himself a little bit of a, of a pocket of space. Have a shot, but it is another good save by the keeper this time. Not testing him as much as the Insigne effort did, but still a fantastic save. Boney should have doubled our lead and got himself on the score sheet, but unfortunately the keeper comes up with another big save, and their keeper really was playing really well. But then... Rose Lozano pounced and the keeper made a mistake. If you watch the replay, the keeper actually steps out and that gives Roy Lozano time to uh, just pick his spot. And there we go, there, he steps out. And that gives time to Roy Lozano for him to pick his spot and just slide it in. It is a 2-0 lead in the 69th minute. I make um, three substitutions, having in mind that we are playing Barcelona next. I put on a few of my younger, inexperienced players. Uh, but Perotti was one of the ones who came on and he had a really big impact on the match straight away. Forcing the keeper into a big, big save. And I think that ball hit the post as well, I'm not too sure. Um... But either way, Perotti had a really big impact. And then the match, unfortunately, ended. That was the last chance. Uh, but we do win 2-0, which means that we do keep our lead at the top significant uh, going into the Barcelona game. So technically, we can afford a defeat. We will still be top with a three-point lead, uh, but it's not good enough, really. They do actually accept an offer for 11.25 million. Um, if they had rejected it or if they had counter-offered, I would have gone straight into uh, saying... 
uh, 12 and a bit more. Um, but actually, I lied, guys. <laughs> we don't have Barcelona this episode. It's going to be next episode. We have Real Sociedad in the Spanish Cup instead. The Spanish Cup, which we won last year, of course. So here is the lineup. Perotti, Boni, and Hamel will start. Quite a, a weakened team, if you believe. Um, uh, Bottia and um, what was his name? Ripper Cruz start at the back. My new centre half, who I signed um, out of the youth club earlier on in the season. But Boney gets off to a nice start in the 27th minute, and he grabs us a goal and puts the team on his back as he has done time and time again this season. A nice little uh, little bit of technical work, then nice little touch, and then away from the defender to get the goal. Uh, Perotti here on the ball. He's going to fake shot round the defender. Uh, he's going to go for another fake shot and go in inside. Give the ball to Javi Herbas, who manages. To just take another control touch, you know, taking it away out of his feet, out of the defender's reach. And then just slotting it into the bottom corner and apparently hugging himself on the ground. I'm not too sure what that was all about, but great work by Perotti to set up the goal. And Javi Hervas just had a nice little neat finish into the bottom corner to give us a 2-0 lead. In the second half, we kept the attacking campagna, setting Boney through. Wilfred Boney having a shot and that goes in. It's, I'm surprised to see that the keeper didn't actually get that. The Spanish keepers are all quite good, actually. They're all around 80 uh, or so. But, uh, they, you know, it's just it's a great, great goal from Wilfred Boney. Uh, smashing it low and hard along the floor. And as you can see, it just nestled low into the bottom corner. Unstoppable by the keeper. I make some substitutions, bringing off Boney, having in mind that we do have Barcelona in three days' time. Uh, following that, I do also take off Campania and Javi Hervas, just because I didn't feel that the midfield had too much energy about them. Uh, Medell, unfortunately, here gets a red card, as you can see, but that doesn't really affect them out, so I decided just to, to not show you the tackle. It, wasn't, it was for two yellow cards, so yeah. But then this happened, Campania and uh, Villarreal, the talks have broken down because clearly Campania wanted more money. Um, but anyway, this is my first transfer offer that I make uh, in this transfer window. Emre Khan here, as you can see, 23 years old. I decided to go for a straight swap with, I believe it is Medell. Um, yeah, I did go for Medell, but Medell is 30 years old and 4.8 million, uh, valued at 4.8 million, sorry. Uh, so I just, I put a little bit on top, what little I have, um, to see if they very much ever want to swap. But of course they say no, uh, because they're not interested in the player and they're definitely not interested in the cash amount on its own. So yeah, about that. But anyway guys, I do apologise how I, look, I tricked you at the start. Um, we are not going to be playing Barcelona this episode, but we will be playing the next episode, guaranteed. Um, so stick around for that. But as you can see... Um, I, I, go, I do the little media thing, I go and talk to the press before the match, which is something I don't do too often, uh, and it's something that I think EA should make it better in career mode, you know, it's, that career mode for me is all about talking to the press and being a manager, um, much more than, you know, playing, you know, I prefer the transfer aspect of things, but anyway, here's a look at the league table before we play Barca, us and Barca still have to play, whatever happens, we will still have a three-point lead at the top of the table, even if we were to lose to Barcelona, so whatever happens, we're still going to be top. But obviously, if we lose, it's going to be a big. It's going to have a big, big impact on us um, as a team collectively and on the league because it's going to put pressure on us. So anyway, guys, I want to thank you all for watching. It is coming towards the end of the episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, you could please leave a like. I would very much appreciate it. And apart from that, I will see you all next time. Bye.